Hi, I'm Mike Parks of Momentum Results. Today's video is about how you create collaborative decisions using the essential skill of business facilitation. What I'll be doing today is explaining what business facilitation is and also providing you with a model for how to apply it. Now, in, in reality, in the business world, lots of decisions that are made and some are not up for grabs. They've been predetermined and therefore do not lend themselves to business facilitation and creating collaborative decisions. Instead, it's about explaining the decision or influencing others to buy into it. However, there's plenty of occasions when you as a leader, either for your own team or you're bringing individuals together from across a business to come together to reach agreement and mutual understanding and commitment where you do need buying, you do need their ideas and you do need everybody to own it. This is about creating collaborative decisions and the skill to do that is business facilitation. For example, you know, classically, a sales target may be given to you. There's no discussion or debate about what the sales target itself. Unfortunately, it's a given. However, how that is reached is up for grabs. The strategies that you adopt and the way you go about fulfilling the target is up for grabs and you might well want all of your team fully committed and owning that route. That lends itself to business facilitation. Equally, if you've, you're leading a project team across a business, a number of people are coming together, you need them all to go away and take responsibility. Again, that can be achieved by creating collaborative decisions using business facilitation. So what is in the starting point facilitation itself? We're probably all very familiar with facilitators. They help teams to achieve things for themselves. Facilitators working outside of a group, helping a team to achieve things for themselves. But the very difference between a facilitator and a business facilitator is that very word, outside of the group. A business facilitator is equally the leader, a group member, anybody within that group who is taking, who's part of the discussion and debate. When a facilitator helps a team to achieve something for themselves, when they leave, they don't have responsibility and ownership for what's going to happen. The business facilitator has, does have responsibility. They are part of the group. They are inputting their views, their ideas, but also everybody else's and together reaching mutual agreement. It is not a process of listening to everybody's views and then deciding for yourself. Business facilitation is about being part of it, encouraging ownership, responsibility, engagement. People often wonder, what's the difference between a business facilitator and a chair? To be honest, traditionally, chairs of meetings tend to be quite formal, regimented, quite controlling. Often there's uncertainties about what happens, the chair will often decide what's gonna happen. Now, brilliant chairs might use the skills of business facilitation, the skill of encourage everybody to discuss and debate, and when there's a problem about what's the answer, putting that problem back for the group to address. Getting the group to face up to the decision, not taking the decision away. So chairs tend to take more control, but that does not mean that they might not use the skills of business facilitation. As a leader of a team, and you decide that you want to involve your team in discussions, and it really is up for grabs, you too have a part to play in that. You too are also part of the discussion debate. But the big watch out is that you get so embroiled in that, so embroiled in the discussions and debate, so embroiled in your own views, that you lose sight of the approach and what you're there to do. So what I'd like to do now is just explain to you how do you do it? What's the framework that you work to? So in any situation, any meeting, anything that's going on, there's got to be clarity of what we're trying to achieve. Clarity of direction. So the first question for whatever the topic is, what is it we're trying to achieve from this discussion? Once that clarity is there, you as a business facilitator are constantly thinking, is the content, i.e. what people are saying, and the process, the way we're working, helping us get to that direction, achieve our result. If the answer is yes, then you don't need to do anything. If the answer is no, there's an opportunity to intervene. 
And when I say is what people are saying, does it appear the content is relevant to the conversation? Is the process we're working to helping everybody? Is everybody involved? If the answer is yes, as I say, do nothing. If the answer is no, you have the opportunity to intervene. The opportunity to influence how we work to get into our result. So the options available to you, classically, most people associate facilitation and therefore business facilitation with questioning. So asking questions. Questions such where are we at the moment? What conclusions are we coming to? What actions do you think we should take? Where should we go to? Asking questions that prompt the group to think for themselves. Equally, some business facilitators will use directive, which is suggestions. Things such as, should we, should we just hold for a moment and each make a note of what we think the next step should be? Can we just stop and reflect? So you're suggesting a process of the way forward. You're not necessarily suggesting an answer. It is a process to enable the group to get there. You are clearly free to add in your ideas and thoughts. However, my watch out is the more you do that, the less again you focus on where we're trying to get to and you just become a group member. And the final option is around observation. Making a statement about what you've observed happening. For example, each time we make a suggestion, what I've noticed is we point out why it won't work what, rather than rather it will work. Or before we've actually agreed on a suggestion, we get another suggestion and then we move on to another. They're observations of what you see happening. They are not judgments on how the group are working. They're not judgments that this group isn't working well. It's factual observations of what you've seen, which people can't deny. So you've got the options of being directive questioning or making observations. You've then got to decide where you focus that intervention. Is it on the individual, the subgroup, or the whole group? Individuals might be to clarify something. Although the danger we keep focusing on individuals is people will wait to be asked. The whole group is everyone. The subgroup might be just a couple of people. You know, it might be, I. so you guys there, you, you were saying this and this and this, what's your reasons? And, and actually getting them to draw those things out. Finally, you apply the intervention and actually see if it works. Now this happens in seconds. This sounds like a long process. It happens in seconds. You work through it. Have we got there? Yes, we go on. So in, in summary, business facilitation is helping you and the teams you're with achieve things for themselves in order to get ownership and responsibility. You are part of it, but you are trying to help them reach decisions. If you've got views and opinions, it's okay for you to share them, but be very mindful about the frequency with which you do that. Before you know where you are, you're less business facilitating, you're more probably chairing and dominating. So hopefully that's given you a feel for how to create collaborative decisions using business facilitation. There's, um, there's more information available in the book. So business facilitation, essential leadership for employee engagement. Lots of tips and techniques in there on how to do it. But hopefully that's given you a starter to think about the framework and the focus and the opportunities. Thanks very much for listening.